Where, where do we start with? Uh, do we can we start with the Tim Pool lawsuit because sure. it's very interesting for anybody who's thinking of going into business, hiring employees, you know, starting a company, and you're all gung ho and you get some shareholders. Poop always hits the fan in my business uh, side of the practice of law. I say there's nothing more important than knowing your shareholders uh, above and beyond anything else on earth. The thickest shareholder agreement on earth. You need to know and trust your shareholders. And hiring employees is equally difficult. So for anybody who doesn't know the basis of the lawsuit, all public information, the company is called Subverse, I think, Robert. It's it's Tim Cast's or Tim Pool's company. He's a majority shareholder, 85%, with another shareholder who's 10%, and the defendant who's a 5% shareholder, and a co-defendant who's not a shareholder. But apparently the minority shareholder at 5% tried to make him a director in a, in a shareholder meeting. We'll get into it. So bottom line. Tim Cass tries to Tim Pool tries to start this new company or does uh, Subverse. They raise a million dollars on GoFundMe, and what happens when things go sour? Sure as sugar, things go sour. They have a, a minority five percent shareholder who's also an employee. Uh, they hire some guy to do some work, and they create content for about a year, and then things start going south. Apparently, the, some of the content they were creating was either divulging private information, which I'm not sure what it is, and it, we don't really need to get into it, even if somebody knows it. I don't think it was alleged in the lawsuit. I think there's probably a reason. Private information, potentially defamatory information, potentially inaccurate information. They start producing this as content. I think it's as relates to the January 6 uh, riots gone wild. And uh, they are reprimanded. Uh, they're ultimately dismissed. But what they tried to do in the interim, apparently, the 5% minority shareholder tries to call a shareholder meeting or a director's meeting wherein they remove Tim Pool and appoint this other co-defendant as directors. They have access to confidential information, which they refuse to submit, access to camera gear, editing software, and they basically go rogue and try to appropriate this company, which now is sitting on a, a poop ton of money. Uh, how much did I miss? And... Uh, go on because I mean, uh, what, what all allegations, nothing has been proven true. So they are innocent until proven guilty. These allegations need to be proven. But one of the exhibits is the shareholder resolution or the, the, the minutes from the meeting that this 5% shareholder held with a non shareholder to remove Tim Pool and appoint this other dude. What's your take on this? So, yeah, I mean, it's uh, the and the other thing they've continued to do because they're in the journalistic field is plant negative stories about Tim Pool in various aspects of the press. One of them seemed to be uh, the source, apparently, for claiming that like Tim Pool had kidnapped her cat and you know other crazy stuff like this. You follow up with it, either one of these two people that are being sued by Tim Pool or being sued by Subverse, uh, which is Tim Pool's company. Uh, and you know, did these people, at least one of them appears to be completely crazy. Uh, you know, and the, and the other one's not, doesn't appear to be all there. And so they, uh, basically, yeah, he hired two people to be journalists. One of them gave him a small share too, and they started doing something that was, uh, that was problematic, uh, led to their termination. And their response was to run off with the equipment, uh, run off with material and information, and then try to pretend clearly they, they went and did some like, uh, dummies version of how to run a company and you know decided okay well we'll just pretend we're the owners of the company huh how, how, how are you gonna take that <laughs> you know th that kind of thing so it became an utter utter debacle disaster uh that now tim pool is trying to you know try to resolve and dig himself out of uh but it yeah it shows the the risk of who you do business with and uh uh and in the media space and cases that end up in the court of public opinion one way or another he has avoided commentary or discussion about it um, the, you know, which... it's, it's, it's the smart thing to do. You avoid, you, you let the yeah. proceedings speak for themselves. Anybody reading that lawsuit is going to have some serious suspicions as to who has seems to have gone off the deep end. Cause I'm reading the lawsuit. Okay, fine. The allegations are one thing, but one of the exhibits are the actual minutes that this 5% shareholder purports to have held with somebody who's not even a shareholder where they remove it's either as shareholder or director, Tim pool himself. And and apparently, you know, the allegations of the lawsuit is Tim Pool convened a meeting of all the shareholders, which th this third shareholder defendant, 5% defendant, 5% shareholder refused to attend. And so he took note and said that she abstained from the meeting. In her minutes of the meeting that she called, she says, I didn't abstain. It was protest. I didn't attend out of protest. 
in her own minutes where she's meeting with some other person who's not even a director or shareholder, it's um people think like you want to give people 5% shares in the company to be nice. You want to thank them. Once someone is a shareholder, they can be a tremendous thorn in the side to put it mildly. Yeah. My guess is Tim Pool's not going to be handing out shares anytime soon, but the, I mean, the suit reads like a bad comedy. I mean the, and a millennial comedy in particular, that's what the other aspect I found intriguing about it was, you know, what happens when you have, I mean, Tim Pool himself is very, very young. So what happens when you have these young people trying to, you know, go through the corporate structure? You know, Poole was trying to make sure he did everything legally correct. So when they did subverse to make sure they were SEC registered before they raised the funds, make sure everything was transparent. He's received some unfair criticism related to this. He tried to do everything uh, correctly. He just got unlucky with a couple of people, one one of whom he made a small shareholder. Uh, and but that that it's only a millennial would say, no, no, I didn't participate in that board meeting. I protested from that board meeting. No, it's, 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 that I must didn't, have corporate impact. No, she said, like, I didn't abstain. I protested. So she knew darn well the meeting had been convened where she's a 5% shareholder. Then she goes out and calls her own meeting and then puts that admission into her own minutes. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's bad comedy, but it's going to be a big pain in the neck for someone who has to deal with this lawsuit and, and the potential damage it can cause because, Look, t Tim, by the by, the lawsuit seems to be a trusting individual. Gave this person a lot of authority and a lot of a lot of freedom and access to company information and assets. And it seems that this person just, you know, thought they were going to, I don't know, hijack, pirate uh, uh, this company, which now is sitting on a, a boatload of money. Um, the, the three charges or the three counts were fraud. The, the the third charge was bad faith. So how does that work in the law? Because He's asking as a conclusion that they be declared of bad faith. Is that? Uh... It's because, I mean, it depends. I mean, it's Connecticut in this state. Each state has its own corporate rules. But, uh, you know, the sometimes shareholders think that rules only go one way. And apparently these millennials seem to think that way. I mean, the idea that you, you would even think a protest somehow made your participation, non-participation, okay. That's not how the corporate rules haven't been adjusted to meet millennial safe space standards or political protest standards or anything like that. But the uh, is that that is that she has a good faith obligation as a shareholder to the company just as much as any other shareholder has to the company. And their allegation is that she's breached that and it, that you know, there's a lot of uh, good faith litigation that takes place. And, and usually it's often sometimes because of majority shareholders doing bad stuff. But more often than not, in my experience, it's been minority shareholders who think that the shareholder obligation only goes one way. And it's, we look at, we have the same principles under Canadian corporate law, fiduciary duties to the company, um, minority, you know, every shareholder has rights and obligations, even if they are 5% and the 5%, you know, the minority shareholders tend to think that the company operates for them and not all shareholders for the company. I, I, I mean, I, I, I'm curious to see where this goes because just based on the exhibits, which themselves are, are, are difficult to misinterpret, especially when they come from the defendant. I'm curious to see how far this goes. If this should, this smells like something that should just be rolled over, uh, apologize, sign a settlement, and move on. But some people, I, don't uh, think that, I think they saw this as their gold mine. They've convinced themselves that somehow they can do all this stuff. The last I saw in the court docket, they're appearing pro se. Oh so boy. you know, it doesn't bode well for the outcome of the of the legal matter for their side. It does bode well for Tim Pool, but it'll be probably a year of a nightmare that's uh, unfortunate just because he hired some people who went local. And, and I'm not judging pro se because there are good pro se litigants oh, yeah. and when, and there are bad. And when they're bad, the court doesn't like it and it doesn't end up well. And if their uh, corporate directorship <laughs> history is any indicator, uh, it's going to get interesting. Uh, boy, and I said, to be continued, I might do a, a standalone breakdown vlog of this just because the exhibits in support of this motion are are interesting and Tim Pool's affidavit is also interesting, but uh, it, it, it highlights the risk. You know, it's corporate law meets millennial culture is the way I see it. it, it to me, it's just, it's, it's everything I say to every client ever is more important than a shareholder agreement. That's a hundred pages long. Know the people you're doing business with, because if you trust them, you don't even need an agreement. And if you don't trust them or you don't know them, doesn't matter what agreements you have, it's going to get ugly. Speaking um, of which, for doing due diligence, one thing, uh, you know, the uh, while whatever happened with his employees happened with his employees, 
Tim Pool did not exercise very good due diligence this past week in promoting uh, uh, John Pierce on his show on Friday. 